Part of this contract to size that mm -hmm. pricing, uh, that'll be part of that as well. Yeah. Time Try frame. to keep it as low as possible. Um, time frame is about 24 months out in phases, um, and so we'll be looking at which ordering of space. And when you say 24 months, that's going to probably have to ask you again on. Take building also about the same time frame, maybe November. Okay. Uh, the runway is complete, and you'll see that. Um, and it's uh, the Spaceport Operations Center. Center. Soft. So see, gotta have it. Yeah. <laughs> Everything has to have an C-H-R-I-S-A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N. I'm the executive director of the New Mexico Spaceport Authority. Excellent. So, uh, you know, we're here at the spaceport, and um, it's, it's kind of the dawn of a new era, if you will, after the space shuttle program ending today. Um, so a lot of people are looking for something else, and uh, this gives kind of an inspiration, if you will, to everybody that there's a new era of space travel. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, it, it is. A, it's the end of one era and the beginning of another. Um, it, with, with the shuttle landing today, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a fantastic, it was a fantastic achievement over the 30 years. It was a generation, my generation was inspired by it. Uh, I went into the space industry and worked for the Air Force for 30 years because of that. And now what can we, what can we give the youth of today? How do we ex inspire them? I'm sure NASA's gonna go on and do more fabulous things and so are the military and space. But the commercial space industry is just emerging now. And uh, this is the first purpose-built commercial space launch facility in the world. And it's right here in New Mexico. Uh, it's a very exciting time. There are uh, many companies that are working very diligently and have the financial backing and the uh, technology and engineering due diligence into their systems. Uh, so I think we're seeing the dawn of a new era. So are you hoping that this sparks the fascination, the imagination 
um, the same type of feel that you had when you were a child to, for the children today? Yes, a large part of Spaceport America, of course, will be dedicated to launching space systems because we're a spaceport. But a, a very large part also is to inspire visitors, uh, whether they're uh, young children, students, college age, and older people. How do we excite people again? How do we motivate them? Think about space. Dare to dream. Dare to dr live your dreams. And we hope that uh, people will get inspired here. We're planning a big visitor's experience. Um, we're just in the uh, first part of planning what that is, but it will be very exciting. It will be dynamic. It will be changing. So when people come out here, um, hopefully they will get inspired. And, and hopefully the kids will think maybe about uh, give math and science a second thought and it won't be so unexciting as it perhaps it is to them today. And that is part of the inspiration. I hope that they can get involved in the STEM research. Um, also, uh, so uh, we're here today and it, it, this is going to be a space launching point, if you will, but um, you mentioned the visitor experience. There's going to be more, it's going to be more than just, people won't come here just to go to space, but they'll come here to learn about the uh, whole experience, right? There'll be lots of activities here for people, and even along the way, we're planning two welcome centers off of I-25, so people can get some sort of experience there. Hopefully then they'll take some form of transportation. I'm not going to tell you what that is, but it'll be some form of interesting and exciting transportation out to the spaceport. Then when they come out here, if they're lucky on a on a a, when they're there, they may see a launch or a Virgin Galactic um, flight. Um, and even if, if there isn't a launch on that particular day, there'll be many other activities that they can enjoy. Again, very dynamic, very high tech, very um, changing. So if you come once at Christmas time with your family, hopefully you can come in June and it'll be different again for you. So. What is the uh, time frame for this uh, right now? What are you thinking? Well, as far as um, we've already had 12 launches at the spaceport, so in effect we are open, um, but it'll be a continuously improving and, and growing uh, facility. Uh, the the uh, terminal hangar facility that you may see behind me here is for uh, Virgin Galactic, So, uh, but, but, but the public may go in part of that as well and, um, and see some of their um, the planes that Virgin has and also experience some other exhibits in that building. We'll also have a visitor's complex uh, probably within a year and a half, two years. Um, so, so this will be continuously building out the facility. These are tough times for a lot of people and you know um, there are some other focuses in the world right now. So why do you think that this is something that we shouldn't lose sight of in these tough times? Well, I think, you know, it, it's important for people to dream and plan for the future. And I think, that, you know, the generation that's growing up now, it's important to excite them and to, to think about what they can do with their life. And whether they go into space or not, you know, that's not so important. But I think it's important to have a dream. And, and I think science and, and math play a large part in many of those dreams. And let's face it, sometimes that's not the most exciting topic in school. And so if there's some way we can make it more interesting, and we are planning to work with the school systems in the entire state also, um, we do currently have um, an annual student launch, and that's part of the New Mexico Space Grant Consortium and NASA, and we host it every year. And it's this year we had 800 students that came out. And all during the year the students work on a payload, uh, some kind of a science project that will be loaded onto a rocket, um, and then they come out at the end of the school year, they load their payload on the rocket, the rocket launches, White Sands Missile Range Helicopter picks up the rocket, brings it back to the students right here at Spaceport America, they unload their payloads and analyze them in real time. And um, we talked to many of the students and so many said, you know, I really didn't like science too well and I didn't like math too well, but I think I might be an engineer now. You know, that's what it's about. How do we excite kids, you know, and, and think about other things they can do. And again, that's not the only thing they can do with their life, but, but you know, if we can expose kids to this side of um, their brain and challenging their brain and thinking outside of the box, I think we'll be successful. And we are kind of behind 
the U.S. compared to other countries when it comes to science, technology, math, you know, all that stuff? I think we're down at around 21 or something on yeah. the country list. I mean, it's it's kind of shocking. So that's why this is so important, right? And and that would be my question for you. Why is science and math yeah. and research, why is it important? I think it's important for any country that wants to remain a leader in the world. I think you have to have a strong background in those technologies to remain a leader. And um, it is shocking. It is very shocking where our country is today and where we were 20, 30, 25, 30 years ago. So if anybody says, why are we doing this, that's part of why we're doing this. What are you hoping um, comes uh, from this? What are you hoping to see? What, what? In fact, I should ask this. What? should people expect when they come out here? What kind of experience are they going to have? I hope they have a fabulous time. It's something they'll tell all their friends about, that they, it was just a very unique experience. It wasn't like Disney World. It wasn't like, you know, some of the NASA centers, all, albeit those are all fabulous places to visit, but it was a little more unique. It was, it's, it's, not, it's going to be different than those, but hopefully they'll have as much fun as they have when they go to those things. And uh, I guess a um, couple more questions. Uh, you, you've really uh, built this and designed this to complement the landscape and the area, right? It's a beautiful area. Um, well, I love New Mexico. It's my adopted state. I came back after 30 years in the Air Force moving all around the country, and I got one free move, and I picked New Mexico. So I came back a few years ago. And this part of New Mexico is gorgeous. Um, we're uh, in the Jornada del Muerto, um, very historic uh, area. The San Andreas Mountains are behind us. Um, we have 18,000 acres out here for the spaceport, but it's much larger than that, of course. Um, there's bison you can see on the way in that's out here, lots of wildlife. We've been very careful about preserving that um, as we built out the spaceport. We have over 22 archaeological sites as, as we uncovered things, and so we're preserving those, and some of those things will also be in the visitor's experience and preserved for people to see who lived here before us. Um, there's evidence of people that existed here 8,000 8, to 10,000 years ago from things that we have found. Um, so I think people would be very interested in seeing that part of it. The uh, beautiful Camino Real Trail also goes right through here. Um, we're busy uh, working with the Forestry Service and Parks to preserve that trail also. Um, people could hike on that trail also as part of their experience if they would like. That trail went down from Mexico City all the way up to Santa Fe. And you can still see it, and you can still see where you know people traveled on their horses or, or walked or and so forth. So um, that was it's just a fascinating part of the world, I think. And it's right here in our beautiful state. One more question. Who's paying for it? The taxpayers. I'm paying for it. You're paying for it. Um, there was there were bonds, a series of bonds that were sold, um, and the plan is that we will be totally self-supporting when those bonds expire in a few years. So the business model is building up the revenue stream from launches, from tourism, um, and so forth, so that we can be totally self-supporting. We do not have to go back to the state. The taxpayers do not have to pay any more money for this facility, but they can enjoy this facility. And Virgin Galactic, I wanted to ask one more. Virgin Galactic, uh, this is their world headquarters. This is, yes, Virgin Galactic is our anchor tenant. So you can think of it as um, Atlanta Airport, where Delta is the anchor tenant. Virgin Galactic is our anchor tenant. We're very, very pleased to have them uh, like as an anchor hub. tenant. It's their hub. Mm -hmm. Someday, maybe they'll fly to other spaceports. Um, right now, they'll be taking off from here and landing here um, for their passengers' experience. Um, it's a fabulous company. Uh, they're making fabulous progress on their vehicles um, with all the due diligence you would expect of a first-class company. Are you hoping to go up sometime? I hope so. I hope so. Great. All Probably right. not the first flight, though. <laughs> That's not. for Richard Branson and his family. There yeah. you go. Well, thank you very thank much. You. Perfect. Thank you. Great information. Uh, I was, I was you <laughs> no, that's fine. That's okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know. 30 years in the Air Force, they do a lot of testifying different places. Yeah. You know, I did do the legislative uh, finance committee here in the state, you know, and after the brief, I did the this before. I haven't checked it. Yeah, just a little bit. Not to the state level, but, you know, I'll see if I was a Congress. Congress. Or it might be a little bit different, but I'm just a loving guy. And See, he's, a, he's a friendly. He's a friendly. Easy. I'm not a friendly. I really have not had too many. You know, I'm, I mean, there was one, I know, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one
This 30,000 foot, 30, foot terminal is the virgin. What? What did I say? Oh, in three, two, one. This 30,000 foot square. 30,000. In three, two, one. This 30,000 square foot terminal is where Virgin Galactic passengers will hang out before their flight to space. What an incredible view! Two, one. This 30,000 square foot terminal is where Virgin Galactic passengers will hang out before their flight into space. What an incredible view. Two, one. This 30,000 square foot terminal is where Virgin Galactic passengers will hang out before they head out into space. What an incredible view. Eight, two, one. 
This 30,000 square foot terminal is where Virgin Galactic passengers will hang out before they launch into space. What an incredible view. Mission control in here, but there's you know, one there. Okay, guys. There you are, there one of them. them and whether these were the big cheese guys or the whatever why they got to name their little area but that's where that so came. when you came in when you made the right turn when mm -hmm. you first got to Ingle and that's where Ted yeah. Turner's ranch yeah. hands that house lives. right there yeah okay. that's his ranch. the one room schoolhouse and church Thank you. Hey, um, Mr. Dave. This will be a good, uh, another little thing. Just a few more years. Engineers and construction workers have got the spaceport to where it is today. And the hope is in just a few years, in three, two, one, up to 800 construction workers, engineers, and architects have worked several years to get the spaceport to where it is today. The hope is that a few years from now, it will employ and sustain several hundred more workers. In three, two, one. About 800 construction workers, engineers, architects have put the space... Ah, shit.
sport together. And the hope is that several, in just a few years, several hundred, the facility will, will sustain several hundred new jobs. All right, in three, two, one. About 800 construction workers, engineers, and architects put together the spaceport and got it to where it is today. And the hope is in just a few years that the spaceport will sustain several hundred new jobs as well. In three, two, one. About 800 construction workers, engineers, and architects put the spaceport together, got it to where it is today. And the hope is just in a few years, God damn it. Three, two, one. About 800 construction workers, engineers, and architects put the spaceport together, got it to where it is today. And the hope is that in just a few years, it will sustain several hundred new jobs as well. Like that? Oh, yeah, that's great. Okay. Don't pull some more stuff out of I know what happened. Oh, yeah, right? Do we look close? Does it look close or what? I think, I think we got. So, what, what's the questions here? So we're doing the first story is kind of a machine that you, you know, it's kind of like in dawn of a new. So for you, I was going to ask you a little bit about um, kind of that. Focus on that. Okay. So uh, say and spell your name and your title. It's David Wilson, and I am uh, do, do media relations spokesperson for Spaceport America. So, you know, it's a dawn of new era. You know, this is kind of uh, an insp let's, let's hope that this inspires kids to get involved in math and STEM research, math, science, technology. Why, how is this helping, you think? Well, I mean, it's a big component. Spaceport America uh, has a big education component to it. Um, part of the economic promise is jobs for New Mexico and, and trying to create higher paying jobs built off of kind of the white sands model that's already here, except this is a new emerging commercial space sector. But we, we want to train the, 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 the future uh, workforce long term, and we want them to come out of the New Mexico school systems. And, um, so we've already, we're on our third annual, uh, we've had our third annual education launch this year. We're middle school, high school, and college students from around New Mexico and some other states that were inv invited. Um, put together payloads and shot them to space and it's a learning experience. So we want that kind of excitement. We want to build that kind of sector where other schools come here regularly and shoot off uh, rockets with experiments and get kids excited and uh, much like Kennedy did, uh, you know, with the space program. Um, part of our, our economic pledge in, in Sierra and Doniana counties, uh, part of the gross receipts tax that we voted for to pay for part of Spaceport goes towards education. And that's for science and math and, and aerospace education. And so that's all part of the long-term planning to try to integrate education and, and, and train our kids and get them excited and about uh, the space and aerospace field and hopefully stay here and work here in New Mexico instead of exporting our kids. It's more, it's more than just a place where people will be launched into space. It's, it's kind of a community center. A learning, a learning experience, you know, field trips and schools coming here and we're, we're in the process of developing the whole visitors experience and part of the education experience but you know we want kids to come here and, and, and learn about things that have to do with science and math and uh, go back and we hope that they become the future engineers and astronauts and, and uh, people that are involved in this industry. Excellent. Thanks. I think that's good. Cool. Okay. Cool. The huge ports, like 670,000 square feet of concrete there. And that is on the uh, apron. Like, that's on the. That's apron. where the where the the motherships and the spacecraft will come in and park, and and people will get off, and servicing will take them into the hangar from there. It's kind of a staging area, uh -huh. but the aircraft and, and spaceships maneuver around there. You need that big space to turn them around, back them in to the hangar facility and all of that. Uh -huh.
great. We are open. In southern New Mexico, nestled next to the San Andreas Mountains. The commercial space industry is just emerging now. It's go time for Spaceport America. This is the first purpose-built commercial space launch facility in the world, and it's right here in New Mexico. With 12 launches already logged, Executive Director Chris Anderson focuses on the future. We're planning a big visitor's experience. On this day, media from Washington to L.A. meet to take a tour of the next generation of space travel. It'll be some form of interesting and exciting transportation. It's something they'll tell all their friends about. For the first time, we got to see inside. This 30,000 square foot terminal is where Virgin Galactic passengers will hang out before they head out into space. What an incredible view. While rockets are lifting off from Spaceport America, Chris says you'll have to wait a little longer before you can catch your first flight. Probably within a year and a half, two years. By then, they hope to be making their own money rather than relying on government funding. The plan is that we will be totally self-supporting when those bonds expire in a few years. And Chris says that's when the real payoff comes in the form of hundreds of jobs for New Mexico. It's the end of one era and the beginning of another. got the spaceport to where it is today and the hope is in just a few years 